What's up guys? So today I'm doing some maintenance on my Kubota excavator. It's a KX91 as you can see. I'm going to be doing quite a few things. I'm going to start with the final drive oil. Um, then I'm going to do the engine oil and filter. I'm going to do the fuel filter. I'm going to replace the outer air filter. And then I'm also going to do two of the hydraulic filters, the return filter and the pilot filter. Um, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. I would say the most difficult one would probably be the hydraulic return filter. Everything else is, is pretty straightforward. Um, before we get started, I'll let you know I, I did try to clean off some of the surfaces that I'll be working on. I cleaned off uh, around the, the drain and fill holes there. Uh, I wiped them down with a rag and I'll use, uh, I'll use some air for my compressor to spray off any of the loose dirt. All right, the first thing you wanna do, is you gotta orient your final drive. So you got your drain plug at the bottom. This is your fill plug and it'll just be slightly higher than this middle plug. This is the plug, your fill level. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll take this out to drain it, um, and then I'll t open these two up, and then I'll end up filling it back up until fluid starts coming out this hole. I got an old pan I use for this. You can, basically, anything you have around to catch it will work. Oh, and I'll mention too, I did run the machine for a little while. Um, you know, I drove it around, so the uh, fluid will hopefully be a little, a little looser. All right, once this, once this is finished draining, go ahead and remove your pan. Clean up the surface here a little bit. And uh, I gave a little squirt in there uh, to try to help get out some of the old stuff. I mean, this thing will probably drip for two days if you just sit there and let it. I let it go for probably about a good hour, I would say. I'm going to clean up all these plugs. And one thing I like to do for these final drives is I put a little dab of uh, thread sealant on there. You know, sometimes you're you're working in the mud, and uh, you know this whole this whole your whole track could be submerged. Um, so I really like to make sure you know you don't get any water in there. Uh, so that's that's one thing I like to do. I don't go crazy. I just put a little dab. These plugs have an O-ring on there too, but a little bit of thread sealing on there is not going to hurt anything. See some bubbles forming in that hole. There it is. I guess it took a second to work its way over there because you can see how much came out. thread sealer on there one thing I forgot to mention is uh, this machine takes 8090 uh, gear oil that's what they recommend for the uh, for the final drives and it's about I think they say in the book it's about 0.6 of a quart for each side um, you know I just got two quarts and 
I have about half a quart left over as I like to you know put a little bit in there to help get some of the old stuff out as it's draining all right so you want to start off you want to clean this bolt real good right around it I like to keep the area kind of clean and on this machine this is a uh, it's a 7 8 socket there you go I got it a little loose got my pan under here I, I set up a crate so uh, you know there's less likely it's going to spill as much I know I should put some gloves on but Oh well. We'll go ahead and let that drain. Once that's drained, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull the filter. All right, once that has basically finished dripping, I'll go ahead and wipe it off a little bit and then get this plug back in. There we go. And now the oil filter, you can see it right down there. But I'm gonna get it from underneath. It's pretty easy to get to. Let me see if I get you a good shot. Yeah, there it is. All I'm gonna use is this uh, oil filter plier right here. Once I crack it loose a little bit, then I'll get the oil pan back under here because this filter is sideways and I'm sure some's going to come out. Okay, I won't press my luck too much. Yep. Now it's running out. Not too bad though. So far it's all going in the pan. I want to jinx myself because I have a tendency of making a mess. Yeah, so I'm sure once this thing pops off, some more is going to spill out. Getting pretty close. All right, that wasn't so bad. So you can see this old filter I took off was a, uh, a Napa filter, uh, 7430. I had to go to Kubota to get a couple of the other filters, so I got the Kubota oil filter. You see that number there, and it's uh, 32430. That's pretty straightforward like any other uh, oil filter. I'm just going to take a little bit of clean oil, put it right here on this gasket. Just a little bit. This thing is uh, it's finished dripping for the most part. 
slide this filter in. See the uh, oil fill is right back here. It's on top. It's recessed a little bit, so a longer funnel will probably be make it a little easier. And this machine holds six quarts. I put in uh, 1540. So the fuel filter on this thing has to be one of the easiest things to replace. You can see it's right here, nice and easy to get to. See, this is another Napa filter. Let's see, where's that part number at? Right there, 3390. And I got a Kubota replacement. I think it was a couple bucks more, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything too drastic. Napa didn't have the air filter, the hydraulic filter, so I knew I was going to have to go to Kubota anyway. And just like the oil filter, I, I rub a little bit of clean diesel right on, right on the gasket. You get under here with your paper towel, shop towel, whatever you're using. Make sure it's pretty clean too. There we go. Uh, let's see what are we doing next next we might as well get this air filter out this one just has two clips you can see holding it in one in the front one in the back This is the outer element. This is the part that really needs to be replaced. This is the inner ele element. This one you could just blow off with uh, with your air compressor. You can see this is it's like a metal mesh, so there's really no reason to uh, to replace these unless they get a hole in it or something. I'll just look inside this that air box make sure everything looks nice and clean so I had to get my rag in there and wipe it down yeah it looks good There's that one. This is 
the uh, Kubota part number you can see there nice fancy filter I'm gonna go ahead and write the hours and everything right here on the top 480 and today is 5 30 21 and then this one just slides right over give it a little twist sure it's fully seated doesn't hurt to wipe off the outer cap See these little butterfly clips. Make sure you can see this. They kind of fit into a little groove on the back side. There's only two, one in the front, one in the back. But if you have this canted a little bit and it lands on a plastic tab, this won't clip right. So this right here is the pilot filter inside there's basically just a little cartridge you know what let me show you there's a little cartridge filter and then we have a little gasket a little o-ring that's going to go around the top of that container here's the part number and you can see there's a nut right on the bottom it's just built in to this casing and it's a 15 16. There's not quite enough room to get a socket wrench in here because of that hose down there. Uh, so you need to use a wrench. Let's do that now. So the return filter is connected to this unit. In order to get it out, you're gonna have to disconnect this hose. Got another hose here, little hose clamp there. Um, and then this overfill hose, this should just slide down. And you can see you got these bolts. There's what, six bolts on there. Um, I went and I cleaned this surface up real good all the way around. This top's kind of cruddy, but none of this is loose. Um, I wiped it off, I sprayed it with the hose, and um, I wiped it again with a brush and sprayed it again. Because once you open this tank, you don't want any contaminants to fall in. That's the other thing, once I pull this off, I have a little foil tray right here. I'm gonna put it right over the hole and put a little bit of weight on it because I have a little bit of wind today. Because you, you don't want stuff blowing inside there and contaminating your hydraulic fluid. So, let's get started on this.
So I had this clean surface set up so you have an area to work on it. This filter was pretty stubborn and you can see there's still a lot of, a lot of fluid left in it. Um, but there's a little set screw right here that you gotta loosen first. It was a 10 millimeter before you could attempt to untwist it. I tried to put a wrench on it. I tried to do it by hand, it wouldn't work. What I ended up doing was I brought it into the garage and I put it in the vise and I just clamped it down here. I got it real tight and then I was able to crack it loose by hand. So, just so you know, it's a little stubborn. And then here's the new one. You see that part number right here, RC4616250. On the top of these filters you see has that nut, so I'm just going to tighten it with that. And then you just tighten this set screw back up so it sits flat on that surface. And that'll prevent this filter from ever unwinding on itself. You know, loosening up from vibrations and such. Wipe off this surface, make sure there's nothing on it. Pull my cover off here. Make sure the surface is nice and clean. And just drop this unit right back in. All right, now we'll just work on getting everything back together. I'm actually, gonna plop this hose on before I work on all those bolts because. This sucker's been dripping the whole time. There you go, it's just hand tight. And now I'll work on all the bolts. <laughs> now I'm gonna start off just getting them all snug. And after I get them all snugged up, I'm gonna tighten them down in a, a crisscross pattern.
There we go. Woo! That was fun. A little messy too. I'm going through almost a whole box of shop towels today, I can tell you that. But the good thing is that doesn't need to be done again for quite some time. I think I think the book says 500 hours is the intervals for that. And then they want you to replace the fluid in the reservoir. And there's a suction filter down inside, but that one is, a, is all metal. Um, and I'm talking to some other people, I don't, I don't think it ever really needs to be replaced. You could clean it off, but it doesn't have a, a paper, uh, paper cartridge inside of it, so. You know, when you go to replace the fluid, if you're gonna do that, then then you can take that one out and, and clean it. I mean, and if it looked beat up or something, you can replace it if you want to, but it might not be necessary. Try to get all the fluid up that spills. I don't like leaving that all over the place. All right guys, just had it running. Got the, uh, checking the fluid level. It's right in the middle where it needs to be. Uh, in order to check this, you gotta stretch the boom all the way out and try to collapse as many cylinders as possible. Um, I got my uh, little note here so I know I did the pilot return filter, the hours and the date. And I went ahead and I marked the fuel filter and the oil filter. The other thing that I'm gonna do and I, I'm not going to bother recording it, but I see a lot of debates about this, um, you know, the, these grease points here. So on this machine, you got the swing cylinder, that's that grease point. That's just a regular grease point. That's basically another point like this, just on the other end of the cylinder. That needs to be greased, uh, at, you know, as your normal greasing. You know, if you grease daily, every 10 hours, whatever you do, um, you can go ahead and grease that one with all the rest. Now, the swing bearing, it's a ball bearing. This one you do every 200 hours, and you do five pumps with the machine in, in all four positions. So you get in the machine, you have the boom facing forward, um, you put five pumps in there, and then you turn it to the side, five pumps, back, five pumps, other side, five pumps. Um, and that's done every 200 hours. You don't want to do that one too much because I heard you could blow the seal out on the bearing. Um, so that I'm not ready for that one just yet. And then right here, this is uh, your swing teeth. Uh, basically, that's the, the the tooth track that runs along that this whole whole canopy you know it spins on. That you do every 50 hours, and this takes almost a whole tube of grease. Uh, my book says 20 to 30 pumps in each direction. So I just wrote 25 on there because it's right in the middle. So I do 25 pumps, you know, boom this way, and then, you know, left 25, straight back 25, and to the right 25. And that, that's how you're supposed to grease that on the Kubota. Um, I don't know how it is for other machines. I'm gonna guess it's pretty similar, but, you know, go, go buy your manual. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, as usual, please don't forget to subscribe and, and give this video a thumbs up. My next video that I'll be doing is going to be on this bucket. I'm pretty stoked about it. This is a uh, hydraulic tilt bucket. It's uh, 44 inches. You see there, it's by Mongo Attachments. Um, I just got it in. I picked it up from, from the UPS Freight the other day. So that, that's upcoming, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.